December, right? Yeah, and that was when it was just you and me and Tom, I think. That's right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the um, the flyer has been in our newsletter now for uh -huh. I think at least twice. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard anything about it, but hopefully someone has looked at it and liked it. Um, I haven't printed any brochures yet, but I'm our. We're going to give an annual, well, I'm just going to provide the town board with an annual recap of what we did last year at their February meeting, um, kind of in my own report anyway, and I'm going to put the brochure and the flyer in that. Um, just figured I'd get their nod of approval before I go spend money on the brochure. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we're done with that piece. And where will, where will the brochures be made available? So those, uh, my plan is in that there's a display rack by the clerk's mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. That's where I was planning to put them. But if you have any other ideas, because we could put them elsewhere. You could probably put them in the Wood Library. Well, that's a nice idea. Yeah, I, and we should, so in preparing for this, um, I, I went to the open space plan, but I couldn't print anything off because I ran out of ink. But I started with the town comprehensive plan update. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the priority item in that is to explore opportunities to improve communications with residents and stakeholder groups using the website, social media, email, and other available means, which that's what this is because yeah. it's really important. <laughs> but then in the open space master plan, it's um, increase awareness and understanding in the general public about open space and natural resources. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think this is really important that uh, number one, I think it's important that there be some money available to um, enable the town to participate in perhaps purchasing some of the conservation easements that could become available. <clears throat> but more than that, people need to know about it. And they don't know about it. And uh, I, I, you know that I volunteered with Jared to be on his new committee that right, he has an yeah. their time stamp which citizens is citizens advisory citizens advisory panel panel okay <clears throat> because that was one of the things that was a, a, really a highly rated element of that group is to increase communication mm -hmm. amongst town people so i plan on bringing that up i'm losing my voice <clears throat> which is a real hazard for me <laughs> <laughs> so is a copy of the brochure on the website someplace? Not the brochure, but the, the flyer. Okay. Um, That's fine. Because, yeah, because we figured the flyers for yep. all the digital and then the brochure for print. Makes sense. I, mean, I, I can, off the top of my head, I can think of all sorts of places that would be ideal to have a conservation easement. And I can also think that the owners of those properties have no idea that this is available. Like no idea that they can preserve their land or mm -hmm. no idea how? Either. Really? Well, one of the things we could do is create some content for like Facebook mm -hmm. that, that goes along that. with this. And if there was some money to do an advertisement, because the organic for Facebook is only a very small amount of people, mm -hmm. but you could push that out and so more people would actually see it. And you can geofence it, so you can say, do it in this area. And but it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but you could reach quite a few people. And, and we can, and we have other groups that, that could, um, spread the word. For example, the the tree group 
um, because you know open space uh, natural resources a lot of them trees so provide our information to them and let them help disseminate that information another great place this this came to mind because i have a bunch of eclipse classes <laughs> that i've been distributing but do you know where an ideal place to view the eclipse would be what do you think Miller park exactly mm -hmm. with benches and a parking lot mm -hmm. it it seems to me that the events committee could do something there and encourage people that and or outhouse and, or outhouse but miller park because it's a kind of elevation <coughs> is ideal and just have invite people to come there and put up for viewing have the uh, eclipse glasses available to them and um make it an event hello i mean uh, there's opportunities where we can disseminate this information that we have to look on our dad it could be available at like when the parks department has their movie nights and mm -hmm. other things and that's too. another thing yeah, yeah. now house park always has a band thing yeah like yeah food trucks and bands uh, or even at the um facility at our house park um mm -hmm. brochures would be great by the door there you know if, or just the printed ones like this stuff would be fine yeah. that and other things that are available in the town and of course uh, the the main hall at Onanda, that'd be a good place to have those things too. Mm -hmm. And the schoolhouse. Definitely the more ways you can spread information will hit more people. There's, there could be a mailing if we identified some key, key lands that would be appropriate for this, we could actually do a mailing to the owners of those properties. But here's the thing, I had Kevin Mulvaney looked at Russ's property two years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's no money available. It's a, it would be a highly desirable piece of property, and just exactly what we would want for conservation easement. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have it there because I would like that property to be forever wild. And I have power of attorney. And you said Kevin Mulvaney. So he looked at it and he was looking into state grant programs, but I don't think he ever found anything. It's mostly wooded? It's wooded, but it's right along Monteith Creek and it goes to the top of the waterfall. How many acres? 17 acres. Because there's a house on, uh, on part of it, but the part that's along the creek is, uh, would be a, a great piece of it for that. And at one part of it, you can, we've had weddings there where you can uh, actually see all the way down the end of the lake. The, <clears throat> for a parcel like that, like for someone like you who's interested, like making it available to the public? That would be a possibility, but I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be. I would just- Well, like, there's grant money for stuff like that. I would like that land protected. Just to be protected, yeah. I mean, um, as it is, Joe Bell, comes out over on a regular basis and offers Russ money, but Russ has no control anymore. So, um, um, what we didn't really get into with our brochure is like what you can do through <clears throat> like with the state and stuff, like not through the state, but like when you do a voluntary easement, which is really just you know, get a lawyer to write up easement language and you use a well, Kevin looked through the DEC because that's a uh, 
Well, uh, I mean, what I'm talking about, you can do. You're not going to get any money for it, but you can place an easement on it. Property owner can do that, and then you can get tax credits from the state for that. That's the only money involved in that. But there are, um, like, the state has the Community Forestry Grant Program for properties that are at least 75% forested and 10 acres or greater contiguous. Um, there's each project can apply for up to $300,000 that can be used towards an easement or purchase um, to protect it. Hmm. And there's, but, See, but the, the catch is it has to be available to the public. The, the value to this though is the um, Menti Creek yeah. and emptying into the lake. And the fact that it's the only um, creek <laughs> that is not owned by the DDC, that the two owners own to the middle. The creek and the yeah. middle of the water bowl. yeah and so that was where kevin thought the value would lay in, in that piece of property it's just it, it's just an indication that there are valuable properties out there that number one we don't know about and number two the landowner might know about it but it doesn't realize that <coughs> And number three, we really don't have an idea on how to procure them and, uh, and put them into this basket. Yeah. What I had thought of is kind of dovetailing with what you, you're talking about was to create a spreadsheet where we're putting information in. So the ECB and uh, the tree team, they both reviewed a property on New Michigan Road. And it's a mature woodland. It's mm -hmm. got huge native trees in it. Mm -hmm. um, Edith Davies lives next to it, and she's is got. Is that where the peanut line is? No, no, no. Um, and uh, homeowner, the property owner wanted oh, that's to. That's totally road. Yeah, um, yeah, that goes over there. Um, the property owner was going to want to put in this big, huge barn and a house, and so they were going to like end up raising a large oh. portion of this. Now the plan board that actually denied them um, because it was like the wrong place to put a commercial business because that's what they were going to put in the barn. Okay. But we came up with a lot of information in reviewing it and it's it would never make the I don't know, because it's small. It's small. Mm -hmm. So it would never make that value. Mm -hmm. But Edith talked about, you know, it's got vernal pools, it's got salamanders, she's seen bobcat tracks, and this abuts up against PDR land. So, you know, it has value, but it would never show up on, on those oh, sorts of maps. Resource map. Yeah, and so what I was thinking of is not only would we have our spreadsheet, but we could offer like a way for landowners to submit in information about their NRI features. And because like that one over there, that successional old fields and shrublands, I'm my property is noted as old ag land, but really it's transitioned into shrubland. Right. Well, it's 20 years old. It's 20 years old. Uh, layer that they mm -hmm. used to create that map and that one, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's a way for you know people to submit some information and us to find out about some of the stuff. And, and that's actually in the you have the natural resource plan there. Yeah. Increase there awareness and understanding of, of it because I would I would say the average landowner has no clue what they have. I would agree with that. The value of what they have. Yeah. But, you know, so that parcel we could put into like, you know, our little database. And like me, myself, I could submit some information about, you know, what's on mine. And it, it's different than what's on these maps. So I've seen wildlife transition on my own place. So, <laughs> you know, I know it's moving to more of a healthier, wild, you know, area but but you know one of the things we could give people are are outlined in actually in the natural resource whatever like animal habitat well you know 
I've got a little pond in my backyard. And even though I'm in a, a highly residential area, there's a, a hedgerow behind my house. There's a pond back there. There are nine deer that are there every single day. Nine. Count them nine. And then they frolic in my backyard, tearing up my lawn. I don't like them there. <laughs> but, but how many people would recognize that this is a natural habitat for, for wildlife and that it has, does have value? And certainly this would not in particular have value, it does to me. Because um, I like the bullfrogs that are in the pond, but uh, but a water source is, but is that, and so that that would go on a list. Water sources, um, sh low hanging shelter for deer because the deer lay under my pine trees. Things that I see, I don't know if other people see. Yeah, I have pollinators. I have monarchs also. Exactly. Not a lot of people do. So it took it a lot of years after they had their big decline for me to see them all summer long. So, but I have flowering things throughout the property, so these pollinators like it. I mean, I just have you know like eight tenths of an acre, and and I see value for me, not for the town, but for me. And I'd like other people to be able to recognize it. I think it's part of a learning process when you move to the town of Canada, where there are resources here that you don't have in other places where you can live. I mean, I lived in Henrietta. There was nothing there, really. I, yeah. yeah, you gotta go in the southern end of Henrietta to see. Yeah, really rough area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know as the ECB, we communicate with a lot of people, or there's a lot of people that, that are pretty clueless about just what they have on their property or exactly. ways that they can still make it pretty, have, have what they like, but be in more cooperation with uh, and, and see, the environment. It's, it's committees like that, the, the, the ECB, the tree committee, the parks and recreation, um this committee what else we we have we have all these pieces together perhaps it'd be wise if we once a year met together and discussed mm -hmm. ideas on sharing and how to get the word out to the people that pay attention to what we do when you were talking about you know teaching people about what they have I and mean, obviously it's only going to work for people who want to know it reminded me about you know the workshops that the ECB has done in the past. Maybe if the ECB is interested, or maybe with help from that CAP group, do a workshop on that. Different types of land cover people may have. I'm not I'm use my words. I'm not good at it, but you know, like that they might have in their backyard or their woods or on their land. You know, do you have any of this? And, and then in that conversation, you're teaching them, but. Obviously, bring up. Hey, and did you know that if you want to protect it forever, there's things you can do. And you know, it it would be. I, I think it would be beneficial to see that at the wood library, because so there are so many people on that wood library that want to a notification like they're having a program on the eclipse mm -hmm. next week, I think. Um, and and you get a wider area people. And that's what we need. We need a wider area of people. We don't just need people that live in the town of Canandaigua. We need people who live in the city of Canandaigua because guess what? They know people in the town of Canandaigua and they visit town parks. Well, and this information, even if this group's target audience is obviously people who own land in the town, this information is useful. Almost everything in there is useful for someone regardless of where they live, exactly. except for the fact yeah. that it says to call us you yes. know those resources that are not town resources are available to anyone anyone can call a land trust or you know whomever or their own town if they wanted to do something so it wouldn't hurt to have it somewhere else the Canandaigua botanical society is right now into their I think it's their 150th year 
um, celebration. So they've got a lot of things scheduled up for this year. They might be able to share some of this information as well. And the watershed. The watershed? I, I mean, because that's critical <coughs> to them. The, uh, having these properties outlined and valued is, is actually very beneficial to the, the watershed people. Well, yeah, the property I was talking about up on New Michigan, that's at a high point and all the water that it oh, soaks yeah, up. Oh, that's one of the basic ways it gets to Slucker Brook. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> the flood that happened down by Outhouse, all yeah. that water's got to go someplace and all goes downhill. Yeah. So there, there is value in keeping those wooded too mm -hmm. because Absolutely. that kept all of that water that it's Absolutely. absorbing from going into that. But yeah, I mean, if there was a way we could start, you know, putting some information together, it's a long-term thing, and, you know, nothing would happen fast, you know, as far as getting a bunch of information. And, and you're right, but, but let's start it, you know, but, that's- the But thing. we let's, could certainly start it, it's a, it's a low, it's a low hanging fruit for us. I mean, it would be an easy thing to start. You remember when we went through all the maps mm -hmm. and we talked about that one in particular? Yeah. Yes. How, how it leaves out the smaller parcels. Maybe, you know, as you guys have been talking, I've been writing down, you know, we want to talk about things we want to do this year. We've already got four on here, but maybe this year we could try and get another version of that map created. It would mean um probably like if the board actually wanted to officially adopt the map it could be just used for informational purposes but if we're going to spend money with Lavella to have them make a map we could do it as an amendment to the map as an appendice as an additional resource you know not throw out that map but make another version that's not weighted for the size of the parcel yes but it's weighted towards important Watershed, yes. Streams yeah. So it gets a darker color mm -hmm. the more of those important resources it has. If it's a stream, if it's buffering a, a creek or you know the lake, then it's it gets weighted higher. If it has wooded cover, it gets rated higher. You know, if there's no home on it, it gets rated higher. Or you know, so it could be weighted, but not based on size. No size requirement. So a very similar map, but just. Because that one is rated higher right. or weighted higher, sorry, um, with slopes, um, natural or agricultural land cover. I think for our purposes, it's got too many elements. Yeah. But when the part that kind of makes that one difficult is the size, the acreage. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's useful. I think when they created it. You know, when when you're looking at spending money to purchase land to protect it, you get the most bang for your buck when you're looking at something large. But I know we all agree, you know, it doesn't have to be huge to be important. Yeah. So on, on that, you know, if there was wild places along the lake, those <coughs> are like tend to be all small properties, so it's they never do. going to show up on that right. map. Right. Not that there's, <laughs> the, lake is, the lake is what it is, but uh, yeah, it would never show up there. I think it's great we have the maps we do have. Agreed. But I wish, I wish more people would have the benefit of seeing them. You know, like remember when we had that, that history thing at the uh, Cheshire Town Hall? Mm -hmm. And we had all sorts of other information there, and people stayed after and actually looked at some of that information. I wish we could have another event like that where we could tell people about some of this stuff. Because we're really a very dynamic town. We have we have all these things in our head. They just don't get to other people's heads. Uh, 
I've had money in the budget to work on these maps. Not just that, but also to update. Oh, which one? It's not where it is anymore. That one. To update this map too. It's just been kind of running in the budget for about two or three years now. And it's in the budget again for 2024, because last year I said, no, really, we need to do it. Don't take the money away. Um, so it, does. it does. That's why it needs to be updated because there's um, yeah, yeah. there's one here and here and here. So not L and right here. Do we have any of the works now? No. There might be still money. We don't have a budget for PBRs other than like our open space fund. Mm -hmm. um, just the fact that it exists and that's where we pull. Um, money from to pay for what they pay per acre to the farmer but then also just there's administrative costs involved with it so they've never created a separate budget line for the PBR program but they just pull it from that but yeah so like this one needs to be updated too no nope. right now the park has changed too Mm -hmm. Right. Now, could LaBella take and use something like, I don't know, Google Earth or something and see what cover is on, um, you know, the town and generate a new map with? I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they use. You I know, mean, some sort of. the lack of a better source so we could see like you know well this one says ecological areas. communities land cover mapping from aerial photos yeah provided by ontario county though oh so, so they used might... encore okay well i assume maybe or they might use the layer yeah we got from flcc and said that it was from the county i don't know it would, I mean, it'd be worth asking if they did. If they could do an updated map of some sort. I mean, I thought it would be useful to have. I don't want to say a new map, but it is a new map. That a one, different it, version that different, of that one. That really needs to be updated. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it still has value, but it doesn't answer the questions we have. Where's the biggest ones that offer the most all at once? Yes, that would be your map. Mm -hmm. The most land to be protected that has value, conservation value. But yeah, like every parcel that backs up to Menteith Creek, out of all of them, there's only like two. That are blue. No, one. So there's a flaw. It would be interesting to like see those maps side by side and, and see just how different they look. And you would wind up like like this one. You would see like darker blue yes. along along every watercourse. Yeah. Except that if we um, took out, you know parcels that had a house on it that were a certain, you know, that were smaller, that never could get an easement really along them anyway, then they wouldn't show up. But stream buffer can be an easement too. Stream buffers are important. Mm -hmm. See, like, Here's Russ's right here. Mm -hmm. That's the largest 
input into the like magic group. And I'm just surprised that it seems to me that somebody would want to preserve that creek all the way from Cheshire down and uh, would be looking at the owners of those properties. Because on the north side of the creek, there is a, <clears throat> a woods of maple trees that would make you cry. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's all private property. Mm -hmm. And it's on a high bank. Yeah, there's some pretty woods back there. And of course, on the other side, there's more. <laughs> Yes, which creates a problem. <coughs> yeah, they have some of the most beautiful land in the town. The what? The Warners. What about them? They have some of the most beautiful land. Oh, I know. And the, views. But they also have guns. Well, <laughs> I think this is a project we could do, should do. Actually, I, mean, I like all of these ideas. Um, after all the turnover last year and not having any time to even think for a while, the policy we drafted that we made all pretty and nice just kind of sat, you know, it's all dusty. I wrote down that um, it's probably time to talk to the town board and see if it's something they even want a resolution for. Remind them why we did it. Remind them that a couple of them saw it and liked it. I'm happy to be there for you and uh, see if it's something they'd like to do. And we wrote it mm -hmm. at Doug's suggestion to not bind them to anything. Whereas here's what you do anyway when presented with a parcel that you like, that you want to purchase, but nowhere anywhere is it written that this is how, how things typically happen when there's something that they want to buy or protect. And I think, because we did it that way, they're more likely to pass it. But they might also say, well, then why do we need it? Is that what we already do? To let other people know that that's what well, we did. It's a procedure. It's like, here's what happens. If, if you were to want to sell your land to the town or have them place an easement on it, this is and, a and policy. That's, that's it, though. We, we can't keep quiet about this. Right. You know, we, we've got to start somewhere. Um, you know, I, I talk to people. I talk to anybody that'll listen to me, actually, um, but not everybody does, and yeah. it's got to come from from the top down. So was was this team advocated by the CIC committee? This team was created by the CIC. Yes. It's just that the town board doesn't know about it. No, they know about it. Okay. Um, and then when the CIC kind of was what's well, gone dissolved last year, this team now, when there's a report to provide, it just goes straight to the town board. Um, no, they know about it, but I think doing things like that, offering up that policy again, <coughs> and when I give them the report mm -hmm. with that in it and the flyer to remind them that we did this and, you know, put it back in front of them again. Mm -hmm. I think this group is, is a group that it's kind of like, you know, we, we do things, we work on things, we, we look at stuff, and we make pretty brochures. We're not asking the town board to do anything per se, so we're kind of quiet in that terms, you know. <laughs> Although, do, this, does this group have a clear mission, direction? I don't know. No. Okay. That's part of why it's been difficult to really come up with big goals because when it was part of the CIC, every year in usually November or December, the CIC would 
have some planning meetings to figure out, you know, what what goals do we want to work on next year? And usually it was something out of the comp plan. Well, well, of course, you'll take five, mm -hmm. usually five goals. Yeah, yeah. We fig we'd look at the implementation tables, kind of a bigger version of what we were doing, mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, what, what might the town want to focus on next year? What has been kind of in the, you know, discussions and stuff? And then we, we would send that resolution to the town board. Usually Doug would talk to them. They already knew it was coming. They already knew what was on it. If they had any opinions about it, he'd come back to the CIC or maybe make a tweak to the resolution. And they adopted it every time they adopted it, every year from 2015 through 2022, um, as is, as written. They would just adopt it. And so then the, the CIC said, these are the things we're working on this year. And, that, and, and out of that came this group and other groups. We had sure. gateway signs, we had um, you know, the tree team, mm -hmm. this one, a couple others. Um, and that specific marching orders. Here's what you're supposed to get done this year. But um, in, oh, in 2022, that's when we didn't have one. That's right. They did not pass um, the resolution in 2022 because the town board wanted to do a bigger strategic planning session in 2023, which they did some, but not down to a level that gives a group like this real direction. Yeah, I've been involved since 2022. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, yes, in their strategic planning, they agree, you know, protecting open spaces is still important, but, you know, what does that mean to the town right. board? What would they like a group like this to do? You have some people who have some time dedicated every month. What would you like them to work on? So, you know, I didn't want us to just kind of fizzle out, but without more direction from them all we can do is go to them and say here's what we want to do but you're not telling us that you want us to do this right so that's what i'm hoping like doing this report reminding them that we have the brochures and that we can do things with them in the policy um and they said again they're going to do strategic planning you know i mean it's a lot easier for a group like us if they said here do this right we'll, say, okay, we'll go do it you know, and I mean, they realize that, but they haven't been doing the strategic planning on their own very much. You know, it's only just started last year. So they're not used to, they don't operate the way the CIC used to, with a defined list. And we're not used to not having that, so. There's a cohesiveness that's lacking right now. Well, that's that becomes one of your communication barriers. It's, yeah, it, it's not everybody all saying the same thing. Yeah. Not because of, we don't want to be, or there, no. there's no ill intent there necessarily. Right. It's just. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, as a whole, they still support the idea, mm -hmm. but when it gets down to like what the details, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what they want. And that's why things like the informational brochure and the policy were easy to do because we weren't, we're not recreating anything that didn't already exist. Right. We're not giving information that isn't already true. You know, we're not creating any new programs. We're not doing anything new. It's a safe, you know, easy, low hanging fruit. I mean, not that it wasn't something we worked on. It was hard, but. Understood. Um, oh, gotcha. But without any other directions, we're kind of limited. But like now, <clears throat> thinking about the maps and like taking all of this stuff and going a step further to, hey, here's a parcel you should purchase, or here's a something that might be worth if it was ever developed to try and get an easement for part of it or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know where stuff like fixing that map comes into play, having a workshop or something. Which I think would be, and I keep pointing at you because I think it would be great to do with the ECB. Yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, just looking at the policy, it says things like um, when do we start this procedure and when something's listed with the MLS? I mean, we meet monthly. Right. One of us could hold the new MLS listings for the town. And just say, here's everything new and available. Do we want to look at these? Uh, yeah. Creating maps and creating a big database and everything else are great, but by the time they're done, we what will we, we have missed? And sometimes it's 
before it even comes available. Yeah, right? <laughs> lately. The, the parcel <laughs> on um, State Route 21 right next to the existing Janet Park, mm -hmm. which is just to the north of it, that the town now owns, it was that first one. It became available, it went for sale. No mm -hmm. one knew it was coming for sale until they saw it on the market. And right. Doug and I don't know who else saw it. And it was like days. Like Right. Yeah. And, and the town board was like, yes. Yes, I, uh, again, mm -hmm. in our in this real estate economy or uh, climate right now, that's that's what things are going for. And that was like a really good example. The only way it could have been a better example is if we knew it was going to be for sale before it had mm -hmm. gone for sale. Well, I think that was an example of where it really worked. Someone was paying attention. Yep. But is that one of our charters is to review the new listings every month? It could be. I mean. There's nothing that says we couldn't and we could say, hey, town board, look what we found. Right. Is it something the town might be interested in? Um, and that's and an, that's an easy. We should, you know, yeah. we see something. Well, let's see, it's also easy to call one of the local real estate, the real estate people and say, hey, we're send us your listing. If they think they're going to get a sale, it's, you yeah. know, that's just commission. So, yeah, just like when you're getting ready to look for a new house, you start working with a realtor and they just yep, start they emailing start, you stuff. Yep. It becomes automatic. The thing is, you know, the more you talk about something, um, you never know what the person who's on the receiving end of that will do with it. And I am absolutely convinced that some of the good things that happen is just a result of a conversation, you know, with someone on the street that you never expect is going to run with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's true. Those lucky coincidences. Well, it, 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 in a way, and, and I can tell you in Rotary, somebody um, in the Canandaigua Rotary mentioned to me that their son has a business on Route 21 um, making vans and he wants to expand and there's no money available for a business that size. Well, I'm on the Ontario County Economic Development Committee. I took it to our committee and we're now looking, we're looking at our governance and our finance to see if we can create a fund for that type of, just as a result of a conversation over a beer, you know? <coughs> you just don't know. Nope. <laughs> Of course, some people don't like me because I talk to everybody, <laughs> but that's okay too. We could have a lot of different things in process all at the same time is kind of what I'm hearing too. Um, the next town board meeting is on February 26th. Like I said, I'm going to put the flyer and the brochure in there, remind them that we're here and this is what we've been doing. I can and the policy. also yeah, put this, a list of the things we've talked about. We've got six things so far that we've talked about. There are things we're interested, willing, would like to mm -hmm. do. Did and you put an eclipse event down there? there? I didn't. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it, Sana. That might be a good special event or your new CAP group. So here's what I had so far. I know a good band. You what? I know a good band. <laughs> <laughs> so what I got Here so comes far, the sun. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Well, they do walk in on sunshine. So. <laughs> Total eclipse of the heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're going to really we could get a whole playlist for that day. <laughs> yep. Oh, the radio station needs to do that. Everything that talks about the moon, the sun, the eclipse, darkness. Okay. So far, what I have is um, ideas that we've I've heard you guys talk about so far today. A mailing to landowners in the town to let them know that they could protect their land. We'd have to figure out who we're mailing to. Mm -hmm. Obviously, details. How many acres? How are we deciding? And that's where a that's new, where that um, yeah a broader map would come in handy. Yes. Um, second one is a spreadsheet of parcels again with whatever criteria. 
with information about what kind of land covers they have, habitat features, et cetera. Um, a workshop. Well, you could combine those things too and do a survey. You could. You, you could. could. And then yeah. populate, you know, it could be a gen generic mailing to anybody in town and in, um, turn in your it's survey and yeah. get a lollipop kind of thing. But definitely. Um, a workshop intended to be kind of a, I don't know, I guess what would it be? Kind of a, about different types of habitat we have in the town. Some kind of increasing so awareness. In case someone might have that that they didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Awareness. And an outline for that, the National Wildlife Federation, you can, you can submit that your home is a habitat, your property, and you get a little plaque. I mean, you don't get anything. Yeah. You just get yeah. this little tiny plaque. Yeah. Um, we did that just because the kids just thought it was because, cute, right? Yeah, you can. Well, like when I lived in the city of Canandaigua, well, when I lived in the watershed, I did the pledge. I had a little placard that went outside yeah. in, my, yep. in my garden that said, do yeah, and National home. Wildlife is like if you can show that you have three habitats or something like that, you you you're a so wildlife. So you think my pet. frogs and my deer would count? Sure, probably. Like water source one. is one of the key. The what? Key water source is one of the key elements. <laughs> what is it called? What do they give you? National Wildlife Foundation. Yep, it, and they give you they give you a plaque saying that you are a um, uh, natural habitat. I don't know. I'll find it. I'll, I'll email it to you. And there's other things along that idea, like the pollinator's pathway. There are some oh. in so Monroe you know, County that are that doing that right now. That might be a draw for a workshop. Come find out how many of these things you can get and give them information about it. That would be a way to get people yeah, to come, yeah, and then yeah. at the same time, they might actually learn what they have. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. It's mm -hmm. like a scavenger hunt of how many titles can you get right. <laughs> um, do the watershed pledge um, recognized by the national wildlife federation and pollinator group that would be fun actually It'd be a new way to look at them well yeah if you're if you're doing things for pollinators you're doing things for a lot of other stuff sure yeah. you, are. you know some people like that like they want to collect mm -hmm. some people have nothing to do <laughs> Um, okay, fourth thing is talk to the town board about the policy. See if we can get it on an agenda at some point. Fifth one, work on the map. And at the same time, I'd be updating that one too. Yep. So maps in general, but with that being the main focus. <coughs> um, six is um, start looking for land. That's for sale. Yep. I like the list. I don't know if it's in the right order, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no order, just the order that they came out. We yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> One of the things we talked about that isn't in your list is finding other ways to share our information. So whether it's the Wood Library or oh yeah, at or the, at the park, 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 yeah. park or whatever, um, or Facebook, Facebook or what have you at the green front, green front. <laughs> i mean this one's catchy protect your land <clears throat> you good at the company store it's, it's certainly, I mean, that could go a lot of places. The, and the title does. I, print? Print. I was going to say it's a cost benefit trade off because they're not necessarily cheap to print. But you're just going to print those in house? They'll look like that if I do. You can so go to Staples. We don't want the full bleed. You know, I can't. I can print them in house, in house. But we do pay. Yeah, with our contract with Toshiba for every color page, so yep. each of those is two pages, and I can't remember what we pay, but it might be cheaper. Yep. To print it at to Quick Print, print it or out. somewhere yeah. like yep. that. Or, or you could, if you have, a, and then they also won't have the white around them. If you have and it'll go glossy or some uh, a different yeah. stock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they'll pre-fold them, and yeah, if you if you're in the thousands, that it's relatively cheap per unit, but 
But if you want to do them in black and white, take the front page in color and have a box that you put them in and put that on the front so it attracts the eye. So you're seeing a rack card. And then have black and white. We should, we should make a black and white version. <laughs> the rack cards you can print on different stock. We should get a marketing too. intern. We did that one year. We had interns in the building for various reasons over the years. Some of them were good, some of them were more work than they were worth, but we get some really you can help. We used to get them when I was at Sonnenberg Gardens. We used to get different interns, so they're out there. How is it already 10.52? I feel like it's only been 10 minutes. <laughs> It was productive. It was. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I have seven things on the list. I, I like them. it. I think we had a really good conversation. I do too. Well, we spent all of last year focused on the policy and then really dug into those flyers and also had a big gap. Right. So it's kind of fun to work on something new. I should have more time now. We have a Pretty efficient team up there now, don't we? It, it was a pretty small team at one point. <laughs> These are a little more comfortable now. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll rewrite this and send it out to everybody. And then I don't. You don't have it. any problem if I talk to Jared. Nope, not at all. I think the more they hear from us, any one of us, the better. I don't think Jared likes hearing from me much anymore. I think he and the other board members, even yeah. though they don't spend much time talking about open space, the concept to them is familiar. The yeah. idea of it, why the town likes it, is still mm -hmm. something they all support at some level. I think there's more support from some of them than others. Um, but I don't think any of them <coughs> They have also been overwhelmed in the last year. <laughs> I, I think it also, you know, would go along with state initiatives because I know the governor had signed a 30 by 30, 30% 30 conservation by 2030. So, and that's only the bare minimum for wildlife to survive. Yeah. So I, I think it falls in line with other New York initiatives yeah. what well, we don't have we have a map that's wildlife corridors yes um, that should be incorporated into the new most, version too most certainly so that little parcel we were talking i was talking about earlier all the I wildlife the there and i mean it's got a lot it's, of farmland and it's residential kind of a little island <laughs> it's an island island of woods Those are important too. They are. Wow. Well, thanks. I think this was good. We got a big list. Lots of ideas. Some and of some it, of them are straightforward. Yeah. Well, and some of it, I mean, we can do these things anyway, you know? I mean, we can get the maps done. Yep. We can, uh, honestly. Know. I don't, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Disseminate the flyer. The map. The only thing about the maps is that I need buy-in from the board because it's an adopted map. So to create a new one or oh, change okay. it, they have to officially adopt it because if we're actually using it and they're using it. It's better that it's official. Okay. Um, but you could make a case for that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I also want to do it in conjunction with that one. With you know, that's just, it's outdated. There's more PDRs that aren't shown. They think you're amazing uh, right now. I'm glad there's... <laughs> um, but as, you know, you were there on Monday, you know, they do take pause sometimes when we're asking to change an official document. And I just want to make sure the they thing. understand why we're asking for it and why it's helpful. And I feel more comfortable going and saying it's just an additional 
different look. Not getting rid of that one, just an additional way to look at it. Yeah, an update is a good word for that yeah. kind of thing too. And I had spoken to the folks at Lavella a couple of years ago about this when we first talked about it. And so they said, yeah, just tell us when you're ready. They're going to ask a lot of questions, obviously, because to create a map, you got to have that criteria. But I think we have an idea. I mean, even if I just said remove the acreage requirement, just show me what that would look like. I can give you a whole different map. Certainly. We're behind you, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> Am I behind you guys? Are you going to be doing the computer from now on? The computer at the uh, no town board meetings? No, we're all staff's kind of taking turns. I mean, Doug used to do it at the town board meeting, so without him, he kind of left the town board kind of. Well, what do we do? You know, so so far, our three different staff yeah, people have seen that. volunteered to do it. I wanted to be at that meeting anyway, so until we have a person, um, we'll probably just continue to rotate through. Um, I think the idea is, I know the supervisor would like to hire a confidential secretary, and the, the idea, the plan is that that person can be taught how to do the Zooms. Just have to find someone first. But yeah, we'll probably continue just to kind of take turns until we get it sorted out. Well, two meetings a month kind of eats into your personal that is, Yeah, that is, it does make it harder to find volunteers. Two, two hour meetings a month. <laughs> yeah. At least two hours. At least. <laughs> it's okay. it, it, it's not the easiest to to run complicated zooms because I do the planning board. And that's a fairly complicated one. Yeah. Well, on like Monday, there was only one document to put on the screen. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it was just the agenda. There was really nothing else to bring up. So that was an easy one. The presentations, the two presentations, didn't even. They didn't have PowerPoints or anything. I get hung up on the PowerPoints sometimes. I screw it up. I can't. I'm, not, I'm used to the ones where it just advances with the wheel. And in that room, for some reason, it's not set up that way. So you got to like click it. But then if someone does something on Zoom and you go click the Zoom window, then you have to go back and like click on the PowerPoint so that you can still advance mm -hmm. it with the arrows because, it, you know, it like it yeah. changes the focus. Yes. <laughs> Which is hard for me because I have a hard time focusing anyway. So. <laughs> I was going <clears> to <throat> offer, I don't mind talking to a couple of realtors, see if we can get on yeah. an MLS map now. Go for it. Yeah. I think that's a good I idea. Mean, that's, that's like easy. Right. Because, because they probably have not something us. they can play. Exactly. It's like, it's exactly right. Give me your parameters and then they just shoot it out. Right. <laughs> 